The views expressed on the following broadcast do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT, Take 12 Radio, or our affiliates. The opinions on this show should not be considered as medical, psychological, or professional advice and are those of the host, co-host, and guest. Take 12 Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting are not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. Co-host Melissa T, Bruce H, and the Monty Man. I'm leaving my world of fantasy and going back to reality. Welcome to the great reality, one and all. Welcome to uh, the show. Melissa T is here and Bruce H is here. That was Evelyn Thomas with Back to Reality, our new theme song. What do you guys think? You like it? It's a little disco-y. It is. I thought it was going to be that one. Back to life. Back to, to reality. reality. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Um, yeah, I'm one of those weird guys that likes the disco beat. I just do. I just do. Not all the time, but once a week is fine. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you guys doing? Well, I- why did you pick our day? <laughs> yeah, I know. Just, Once a week is too much for Bruce. Yeah, just you know, just yet another thing that I've done to irritate a little bit, of, my little, brother. Bit of, little bit of Percy Sledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I had I was choosing between Evelyn Thomas and Al Green. Al Green does gospel music, and 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 um, one of his songs is called uh, "Love Is Reality," and it, it's a beautiful song. So we, we may play that one of these days. But Evelyn Thomas won out because it was a it was a flip of the the coin. <laughs> P- P- Percy Sledge. I, Percy, I like Percy Sledge. Yeah, you know, you know who I saw on TV the other day was, um, uh, um, what's her name? Is Percy it, Sledge. Gladys, Gladys Knight in the in the Pips. <laughs> was it Gladys Knight in the Pips? Yeah, Gladys Knight, and she's like in her eighties, and she looks like she's fifty. Wasn't she the one that did the Dancing with the Stars? I think she did. Did 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 that? I can't talk <laughs> today. Well, welcome to 2015, everybody. Woohoo! Uh, yay! And we're uh, we're looking at personalizing the tenth step today, uh, and uh, we're gonna, so we're going to be talking about continue to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly, promptly admitting it. Um, that is not to say, however, that everybody is ready for you to promptly admit it to them. Sometimes people are processors, and you, you, you promptly admitting it doesn't necessarily mean you bleed all over the poor person that you've wronged right away. Uh, but we'll be talking. We'll be talking about that and uh, uh, some of the promises that are in the tenth step. There's a whole bunch of them in the te- in the tenth step that are just just awesome. Uh, so, um, oh, by the way. Bruce just celebrated 12 years. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations. Thank you. I just found that out. <sighs> because he doesn't talk to me during the week. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, there's they, enough power in this, in this program because I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> they, give me, they give me a marble. They gave him a marble. Not a coin. Mm-hmm. A marble. Yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. What are you supposed One to marble do? at a time. <laughs> One marble yeah. at a time. I have, I have three marbles from that place now, see? Wow! So I can rattle them around, and I, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Wow! There's a there's a there's a, an AA meeting called what? One marble at a time. One marble at a time, right? Oh, yep. is that right? Yeah, we're at the Chance Building. Yep. Yeah, on Saturdays. I'll yeah. be darned. Yeah, I like to call it one less marble than needed, but no. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Uh, my 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 single one's not so lonely anymore. <clears throat> Uh, by the way, I just want to inform everyone <laughs> that listens to this show, if you hear something that you think is totally, you know, out of line, <laughs> remember the disclaimer that the views expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Take 12 Radio or KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. So don't blame us. Right? Per- Percy Sledge. Percy Sledge. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is going to be his word for the day. He's going to walk around theme. randomly saying Percy Sledge. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll be right back. Let's I, listen to. I, I love him. <laughs> Let's listen to our sponsor, Free by the Sea, uh, for this part of the show. We'll be right back. Free by the Sea is a drug and alcohol recovery center located in beautiful Ocean Park, Washington. This facility is amazingly gorgeous, but what's even more amazing is the integrity of the staff and the treatment provided for those wishing to recover from narcotic and alcohol addiction. The folks at Free by the Sea have a passion for presenting the solution to addiction for you or your loved one. To speak with an admission specialist, visit FreeByTheSea.com or call toll-free 800-272-9199. This place is simply amazing. Right, everybody, it's back to life and back to the great <laughs> reality. And it's time for Monty Man's Recovery News in Focus. That's right, Recovery News in Focus is brought to you by Origins Recovery Centers. Check them out at originsrecovery.com. Dun, 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 dun. Boom. Okay. Uh, by the way, if you're suffering from addiction, well, they understand at Origins. As men and women who have recovered from addictions themselves, they are familiar with the daily battles you face. But I can't afford it, you say. Well, the good news is that they will work with you whether or not you have insurance. Nothing was more expensive than continuing to drink or use, right, you guys? Mm-hmm. Pretty spendy stuff. So call them at 844-843-8935. It's toll free. Yes, it is. All right, Recovery News and Focus, uh, brought to you by Origins uh, this week. Uh, and speaking of Origins, here's something you really got. Origins, it, it, if that sounds familiar to you, if you've ever watched the Dr. Phil show, uh, Ben Levinson uh, is on there quite often, and Origins and uh, affiliate treatment facilities um, from Origins uh, is, is featured on Dr. Phil a lot. He uses them all the time. They do it right. They really do. They're very holistic. Well, here's some news. Mm-hmm. Origins Behavioral Healthcare agrees to acquire two addiction treatment centers from Karen. Uh, a major deal in the substance abuse recovery industry will mean new treatment options for people struggling with addiction. Origins Behavioral Healthcare and Karen Treatment Centers announced today an agreement in which Origins will acquire two addiction treatment centers owned and operated by Karen, Hanley Center in West Palm Beach and Gate Lodge in Vero Beach, Florida. Uh, This aligns two of the best-known treatment centers in the nation, amplifying treatment options and placing the care at Hanley Center within reach of those with health insurance. So congratulations to Origins. Uh, I'm talking about that because Origins is our exclusive sponsor for um, Circuit Speaker Mondays and uh, here at Take 12 Radio. Uh, Here's story number two. In the UK, you're going to love this, you guys. In the UK, they're introducing the Drugalyzer. Police launched the first ever roadside saliva test that can detect drugs and prescription medications. So everybody's been wondering, what are we going to do about regulating marijuana? Well, once again, we look to the British to come up with something, which oftentimes they do in the medical profession. Uh, New roadside testing kits were approved by the Home Office last week and will allow police to instantly test drivers for both narcotics and alcohol. Uh, Policing Minister Mike Penning said motorists pulled over will not know whether they will be breathalyzed or drugalyzed or both. The test will also allow police to check whether motorists have taken prescription medications, including strong painkillers, sleeping pills, and drugs to treat anxiety that can impair their ability to drive. People will have uh, exactly the same view of drug driving as they do of drinking and driving. It is an inherent thing to do, and I agree. Not only uh, do you put your own life at risk, but you put innocent people's lives at risk as well. We will drive this menace off the road, he said. At present, officers have to arrest drug driving, drug driving suspects and take them to the police station to undergo time-consuming blood tests, that must be conducted under medical supervision. Motorists could then delay testing so the drugs would have time to leave their body. He said the saliva test will enable officers to better uh, prosecute motorists that can pass a breath alcohol test but are clearly still completely out of their tree. 
Does it say that? <laughs> yeah, it does say that. <laughs> I've been out of my tree before. You're out of your tree. <laughs> that makes sense, but I think people are going to try to go. Oh, they'll try to work it. That violates my civil rights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but of course, you're violating everybody else's by driving under the influence, but who cares, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord have mercy. Okay, now this one, you're, you're uh, let me see. Okay, this one, I can't wait for Bruce's reaction to this. Iran says it has a machine that can detect a drug addict from a mile away. What do you think, Bruce? He's just shaking <laughs> his head. <laughs> Well, according to Iran's state-run Mare News Agency, Iranian scientists have developed a radar that can detect uh, detect explosives, narcotics, and even drug addicts from almost a mile away. The device's inventor, Saeed Ali Hossein, told the state news service this week that the radar tracker was designed and built to detect drugs, explosives, bodies alive and dead under the rubber, or rubble, excuse me, (laughs) Runs with the rubber. Uh, uh, also, addictive drugs and alcoholic beverages. The device could detect drug addicts from a distance of 1,500 meters and determine the degree of addiction inside their bodies, uh, reports the agency. My God. The article, which, despite its brevity, is a surreal read, quotes Hossein, um, who it says works for a knowledge based company explaining the science behind the enterprise. The transmitter part consists of radio waves and radio magnets emitting waves across the earth and stimulates elements, molecular layer, and releases their ions. The receiver detects ions as well as the molecular layer, then transfers waves back to the target to detect their essence. Iranian authorities like to trumpet the country's scientific accomplishments, even when they appear more than a bit dubious, (laughs) you think? Uh, The Islamic Republic's guardians of moral probity also uh, champion their efforts to curb drug addiction and trafficking. The country has hundreds of accused drug traffickers on death row. Iran is one of the world's leading uh, uh, leading, uh, promoters of capital punishment. Iran, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia account for almost 80% of the world's executions uh, that are drug-related in 2013. How are they going to get that to pass the test, you know, here in uh, the United States? I don't think the United States is. I don't think they're going to do that. They'd have, yeah, boy, that that would take that would take some doing. Yeah, to get that to, you know, where you could put it in the court of law. Didn't they have some devices to determine whether people were witches back in the day too? <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, to, oh, you're a witch. <laughs> Why? Because you look like one. <laughs> <laughs> to verify that machine, you would have to have addicts that would say that. I'm a level six addict and verify that the machine was accurate. You know, I don't I know. I don't get it. But you know what? There's a lot of things that we've accomplished with technology today that 20 years ago we would have said that's impossible. Oh, I, it, it's not that I don't doubt it, but yeah. it, it'd take a lot to get that through the test that, that it would take to be, you would to think be able would. to use it in the court of law. But of course, then we're talking about the Iranian government where somebody sneezes and they go, passed. You know, so DNA you know. wasn't a simple thing to get no you know, to get into the no course. no 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 oh. no. But can you imagine taking a, a radar gun and pointing it? So, oh, that guy's a drug addict. Oh, she's a drug addict. Mm-hmm. Oh no, he's an alcoholic. Nope. What he's about if you're in recovery? <laughs> Does it still come up the same? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's an addict, but he's in recovery. <laughs> Yeah, he's just taking pain pills. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Marijuana maintenance. Oh, Lord yeah. have mercy. All right, so there that does it for uh, Recovery News and Focus for this week. I think I'll stay in the U.S. Thank you very much. All right. Well. Ooh, boot scooting. And now. For that wonderful part of the show that Bruce just absolutely adores, it's time <laughs> for Take 12 Recovery Trivia. That's right. Sponsored by Serenity Springs Recovery in Edgewater, Florida. SerenitySpringsRecovery.com. 
All right, here is trivia question number one here at Take 12 Recovery Trivia. And they have absolutely nothing to do with recovery. Al Jolson. <laughs> Percy Sledge. Percy Sledge. <laughs> you guys got it. You're yeah. talking about foreign countries. In Japan, letting a sumo wrestler make your baby cry is considered, and here are your choices. A, good luck, B, extremely rude, or C, against the law. Hmm. Good luck. Yeah, I'm going to say good luck. Good luck? You guys are right. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we get uh, barn animal sounds today. All right. <laughs> Number two. Sea otters do this when they sleep so they don't drift apart. A, link tails. B, cuddle. Or C, hold hands. Hold, hold hands. hands. You are right again. <laughs> Wow, you guys are just... <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, number three. This will get a little harder here. The American Psychiatric Association's handbook classifies caffeine withdrawal as A, a physical disorder, B, nothing to be concerned about, or C, a mental disorder. Or D, something that Melissa is going through. <laughs> A physical disorder. Physical disorder? What do you say? What was uh, the second one? Uh, nothing to be concerned about and see oh. a mental disorder. Yeah, I'm going to say physical disorder. Well, you both would be incorrect. They consider it a mental disorder. I knew that. Did you, uh, did I, you really? I knew that. <laughs> well, here, here's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> you get some geese. <laughs> All right, here's your bonus okay. question. Uh, George Washington insisted his Continental Army be permitted a quart of this as part of their daily rations. A, a quart of jam. B, a quart of milk. Or C, a quart of beer. Beer. I, I'll go with the beer just because it's You guys great. are correct. It was a quart of beer. Mm-hmm. Why would they give him jam or <laughs> milk? Milk. <laughs> yeah. It's curdled, but it's all right. <laughs> Oh, my word. All right, that does it for <laughs> Take 12 Recovery Trivia, which has nothing to do with recovery, <laughs> except for having a good time. Uh, yeah, I know. What can I say? All right, uh, we'll be right back with the 10th step, personalizing the 10th step. Don't go away. Hey there, this is the Monty Man from Take 12 Recovery Radio. You know, many of us have attended all sorts of addiction symposiums and treatment conventions, and so much of the time we walk away from these events feeling like we've been preaching to the choir just one more time. May I suggest a different kind of substance abuse and addiction treatment event? The Evolution of Addiction Treatment Conference, February 5th through the 8th. 2015 at the Weston Los Angeles Airport Hotel and Convention Center. The current field of substance abuse and addiction treatment has been evolving for almost eight decades now, and during this time, we have seen many important developments as well as many failed experiments. It seems time to step back and conduct a professional inventory of where we have been, where we are now, and where we are heading. Well, this conference will provide a forum that encourages professional dialogues of controversial issues, showcases innovative and creative treatment approaches, and offers an overview of the field and its future. For more information, visit www.theevolutionofaddictiontreatment.com. Join me and many of my guests as we attend the Evolution of Addiction Treatment Conference February 5th through the 8th at the Weston Los Angeles Airport Hotel and Convention Center, 2015. Yes, and we will be broadcasting from the Evolution of Addiction Treatment Conference. Uh, Dr. Dr. Alan Berger and uh, Andrew Martin uh, facilitate that thing, and uh, it's just a, a marvelous event. If you have a chance, if you're down in the L.A. area, drop by the the Airport Weston Convention Center and Hotel, and uh, stop by the booth and talk to the multi man. We will be, and I, I will also be doing the uh, emceeing the raffles and uh, some of the the goings on in the uh, presenters um, um, 
building part of the thing. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Mm. So uh, we, we, we did it. Uh, they do it every other year. We did, we did it two years ago. And uh, it was marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. All right. So uh, the test step comes with promises, too. And we're going to be talking about those. But before we do that, uh, the 10th step, uh, continue to take personal inventory. And when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Uh, this is kind of launching us forth into 10, 11, and 12, uh, which is, uh, Bruce, is Bruce just loves this. And uh, actually, if you have an opportunity um, to check out our archives, uh, Bruce uh, did uh, really a show slash presentation of 10, 11, and 12, mm. uh, 12, not so much. Um, <laughs> and you won't you won't really understand that unless you listen to those. Oh, I want to now. Uh, but it is it is a marvelous presentation, and I've kept it on our website because uh, it is so well done. Uh, and and so we're gonna we're gonna tackle this again, but we're gonna personalize it this time, and uh, talk about how this uh, you know how we identify with this, how we personalize uh, the tenth step. Um, before we do that, though, um, I, I want to read from page 84 in the third edition of the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, this is at the tail end of that question that we asked last week, uh, referring to the ninth step promises or the extravagant promises we think not. They were fulfilled among us, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. They will always materialize if we work for them. Uh, that being the 12th promise in the nine set promises, then materializing if we work for them. And then it says, this thought brings us to step 10. And this is what it says, which suggests we continue to take personal inventory and continue to set right any new mistakes as we go along. Now, let me just camp out on the word suggest for a minute. Please understand, listeners, that this is a suggested program, not a program of suggestions. What that means is this isn't a program where you can just pick and choose and say, well, that's suggested, so I don't have to do that, but that's suggested and I like that, <laughs> uh, and so forth and so on, to get the results that it's talking about. To, to, to experience the promises in each one of these steps you can't look at this as a program of suggestions. You have to look at this as a suggested program in its entirety. So when it says, this thought brings us to step 10, which suggests we continue to take personal inventory, it's part of the program as a whole. Not the fellowship, but the instructions. Okay? And, and it says we continue to take personal inventory. How are you going to know how to do that if you haven't done the fourth step? You're not. And so, once again, we poo-poo the idea of jumping ahead. Oh, well, I'll just do a 10th step. You don't even know how to do a first step. You know, so it, it's imperative that we do these things in order. It says we vigorously commence this way of living uh, as we cleaned up the past. Once again, the, the, the Bill does this wonderful thing of driving home how important it is that we do this stuff right away. You know, when it talks about launching forth into the fourth step, that's an that's an Air Force term. It means zero to 200 in a matter of seconds. So you go from third to fourth right now. Um, he says it again. He talks about vigorously commence this way of living as we cleaned up the past. We have entered the world of the spirit. Our next function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness. That's a directive. That's our next function, to grow in understanding and effectiveness. Something, even though we've come to this part, we need to camp out on a little bit. We need to grow in our understanding and effectiveness. It doesn't say maintain our understanding and effectiveness. It says grow in our understanding and effectiveness. So I'm going to stop there for now and, and open it up to you guys. Who wants to start? Well, I think I do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Phew. I, I agree with you a hundred percent that if you haven't done four through nine, how you could continue and that's the word. Yep. Continue to take personal inventory. So if you have, if you don't know four through nine, 
you can't continue to do it. No. You just can't. So we continue to do that. And then it says this marvelous thing. And he really, he says, we've entered the world of the Spirit. Yeah. You know, and our next function is to grow in the understanding of that. Of what that is. Yeah. You, you know. And we're not talking about this. We're not talking about the spirit of the fellowship. No. We're talking about the fellowship of the spirit. Exactly. Yeah. And page uh, 164 is very pronounced in that. And uh, it's all in capital letters. And it's, you know, entering, entering the world of the spirit. We're connected, by uh, me and Monty, by more than just the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. We have a fellowship of the spirit. Mm-hmm. And I believe that we do too, Melissa. Yes. You know, that we have that. That's the unity. That's the leveling of the playing field. That's the thing that holds us and binds us together like we never were before. And that's the thing that allows us to have the kind of fellowship that we've been craving our whole lives. God shows us that, Mm -hmm. and he gives that to us. And it's something you do not want to miss to understand what that's all about. Uh, There's several people in Alcoholics Anonymous that I have this relationship with, and it's, uh, it's just marvelous. It really is, I mean, the kind of relationships and the friendship that I've craved all my life. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't believe you can get anywhere else. So that's my little take on that. Yeah. Melissa? You know, I almost called in today because I don't I don't have a lot of insight onto the 10th step. That's all right. Maybe when we get to the, the promptly admitting part. But... um. But I did do a little bit of reading before I came, and and I was struck by that. This is where we enter, yeah, um, into the spirit, and so I really like that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm hoping to learn from you, gents, today too. Well, and I, I learn something every time we do a show. I, I really do. Um, the, these things give me a, a lot, a lot to chew on. Um, that word "continued" shows up again. Once again, here uh, it says it says this is not an overnight matter. It should contain for our, for our lifetime. Um, it says continue to watch for selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear. Those things we talked about in the fourth step. We continue to watch for those. Here's one of the danger areas for us because we read these things. And if we haven't done the work well and we don't have a sponsor that's to guide us through it, mm-hmm. then we start to believe that this continuing thing that that we're using the steps to continue to oh, take yeah, personal go, inventory, yeah. apply this in all areas of our lives. And we start to become step-dependent instead of God-dependent. Yeah, and you're you're absolutely it, right because it says right here, and this is the next this is the next statement. Uh, and by the way, it didn't say to, con- to continue to work steps one through twelve. It says continue to watch for selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear. Our tendency is to think, "Well, I've done step twelve. Now let's go back to step one." Some people do it every year. Some people do it every month. Somebody, what, whatever. And I'm not, I'm not say- suggesting not to do that. But what I'm saying is, if you're depending on that, on that work, and not the one you're working towards developing a relationship with. Then you're going to continue to do that over and over and over again, and it's going to be for naught. And, 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 go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to say something at, at this point before we go any farther. One of the reasons that I'm bringing this up and we become step-dependent is, is people, I see that happening to them and meeting-dependent. But, see, we're trying to get a, 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 a new relationship with our Creator. Right. And the steps are there. They're only a method by which we use to point us towards God. That's what the steps are there for. Yeah. They, they're, they're spiritual principles that come right out of the Bible. Mm-hmm. And if they're used properly with God's help, you can be opened up and he'll, have, he'll let you look at what you are and you'll see your need for him in your life. And I think that's on all different levels. See, he might allow you to see a certain thing and your need for him and me, 
the darkness of of the addiction or something like that. Some he lets them see uh, the hopelessness of the human condition, mm -hmm. you know. And then you hear those things in the meetings, and we think there's 3,084 uh, different methods, and there's not. Right. It's the same method that opened the door for you as it is for me. To let us each have our own personal experience with it. You, that's exactly Amazing right. God. Yeah, the method is the mm -hmm. same. The experience may be, may be different, may look different, uh, but 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 the method is the same. Somebody posted on on. on um, I made this statement on Facebook, on one of the groups that I'm in, that if if twelve step fellowships were doing the work that we originally were it was originally laid out and how to do it the way it was originally laid out by the co-founders that we put a lot of the treatment centers out of business and, and i'm not anti-treatment please do not tell people that the monty man's anti-treatment <laughs> we have treatment facilities that sponsor our station i am pro-treatment when it's done properly when mm -hmm. the whole person is treated um but you know, it, we're, we're quick to write that script to go to a treatment facility before ever um, attempting to even crack this book so so many times. And because the book is not even cracked in so many meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think if we were doing the job that this book lays out, I think a lot of people would avoid having to go to treatment. That, that's my first mm -hmm. Well, somebody remarked and said, you're putting everybody in the same box. Well, this goes back to the method is the same. That's right. When you, as you go along and you keep reading this step ten because it's only a page and a half. Yeah. It the it becomes crystal clear that what we're doing here, and the book when it first started off, it it told us he says lack of power that was our dilemma. Yeah. Well, where and how were we to find that power is exactly what this book is about. Right. That's exactly. I mean, it, that's parts in italics. And that is saying that these steps are about showing you how to develop a relationship with this power. That's right. Right. Shit. That's right. right. Now, you can, I'm going to say something that's contradictory to that people think that people can come into Alcoholics Anonymous and use their self to apply the steps and they apply them in their life and try to live by these principles and their life will change. And, but that's them. Applying the steps, they're relying upon their self and their ability to do so, but it will change them because they're principles, and principles don't change. We right. do. So if they live by these principles, they'll have some sort of stability and meaning. Okay, and that's a good thing. But if you do these steps the way it's talking about in the book, and you have this spiritual awakening, it'll transform your life. Now there's a huge difference. Yeah, between your life. Just looking different and completely transforming. Yeah. But, yeah, but when it gets transformed, it's a divine act. And may I just say that exper spiritual experience and a spiritual awakening are two very different things. You know, when I dropped acid, I had a spiritual experience. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it was it was valid. Mm -hmm. It was it was induced by chemicals, but it was definitely a spiritual experience. But it was no way a spiritual awakening. Yeah, but see, we're not talking about that either. No. I had a spiritual experience when my car rolled over. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, I really did. Yeah. You know, but the spiritual experience we're talking about is the one as a result of the steps. I mean the awakening. Yeah, it's yeah. a result of the yeah. steps. Because you can't have a spiritual awakening as a result of steps you haven't worked. That's right. Yeah, it's really, really hard to do. It says here that uh, when we, we see the selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear, we ask God at once to remove them. So, at once... Yeah, I didn't ask Melissa. Right. <laughs> I don't have that much power. But we can see how much... Uh, listen to what he just said. You've entered the world of the Spirit. Now it's talking about you ask God. And, and and here's where people get confused about going and making amends immediately. This is not what it says. It says we ask God to remove them. Then it says we discuss that with someone immediately. Okay. Sponsor, maybe? Right. Okay. And then it says, and make amends quickly if we have harmed anyone. It doesn't say we make amends immediately. 
We do it quickly, as quickly as possible, um, depending on the situation and the person, and you know, and everybody's different. But discussing them with someone and making amends to the person you harmed are two different things. Hmm. They're two different things, and people confuse that sometimes, and they think that means, oh, well, I did this thing to this person, I need to go and correct it right now. Well. That may not always be the wisest yeah. thing to do. Would you like to hear a little short story about that? Yes, about I would. What it looks Please. like in my life. Remember when I told you about my tools mm-hmm. and I had to go make the amends? Right, right. Well, I, I went and made the amends. And I talked to her a couple of times on the telephone now. I'm going to cry. Hmm. Yesterday I got a phone call and I got to see my grandson. Where there had been a barrier there, right? Yeah, because of this tool issue and my wife dying and and the kids were hurt behind their mother, losing their mother. And then to have me accuse them of taking these tools and the tools were there. Mm -hmm. So when I made this amends and the healing started, it didn't just get healed, but the healing started. And then I got a phone call saying, come over. And I got to see my grandson ride his scooter that I gave him for Christmas. And, you know, I love him. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. That is so I see me all choked up. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's, it's just a, a wonderful thing. I see the method that it has. And I had to go to God and ask him to hold me and keep me and give me the willingness when the door opened to do that because I couldn't do it immediately when I found the tools and I knew the farther it got away, the harder it would be to do. Right. And so he held me and he gave me the willingness to step forward. I didn't want to do it. Mm-mm. <laughs> it didn't. You know, but I did it and the fruit that it bared was now I have a relationship again with my grandson. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Praise that God, I love Isn't that. that. Awesome? that is an well, you awesome said it story. didn't happen overnight, but I think it was only two weeks ago that you told us that you needed to make that amends and that oh. you were holding yourself at the ready. Yeah, it it was it's it, it happened quickly, but not. not I just overnight. don't want people to think, "Boom, you do it, and boom, everything's okay." Right. That's not true. Right. And it was funny, and it was uncomfortable, and you know, but it was it's marvelous, you know. What I'm, I got to sit there in the house and look that at is all so the Legos. Great. And, yeah. yeah, and I don't want people to be. You know, I mean, you're going to be discouraged. I, but but try not to be. I mean, if people don't respond to your amends the way you would like, you know, doesn't mean that they won't at some point. Sometimes there's a process that they have to go through that you may not know anything about, mm-hmm. and they come around. Um, so remember to offer the same tolerance mm-hmm. that you, that you want, which brings me to something I think is very interesting in this. Um, it, it, it says, uh, uh it says, then we res- resolutely turn our thoughts to someone we can help. Love and tolerance of others is our code. This is a, this is a quote that is taken out of context in meetings all the time, referring to putting up with inappropriate behavior. Well, love and tolerance is our code. Well, please read that in the context of the tenth step and what it's what it's talking about. It doesn't mean that it's okay to accept and put up with inappropriate behavior in meetings. It's all right for a chairperson to reel the meeting back in and get back on topic. It's okay to do that. It's okay if somebody brings in a gun to the meeting and is waving it around to tell them that they need to remove it from the premises or come back tomorrow. It, it's okay to do that, to say, oh, well, just love and tolerate. That's BS. You know, it's the membership that is that there's no requirement for other than the desire to stop. It's the membership. It's not the attendance. You can't come to a meeting naked. <laughs> You'll be asked to leave and come back tomorrow or go put some clothes on. So I wish people would stop. Love and tolerance, love and tolerance. Stop it. <laughs> oh. Okay, there's my rant. Um, here's a really interesting statement, and I just think it's marvelous. This Now we're going into the promises of the 10th step. 
Here's the first one. We have ceased fighting anything or anyone, even alcohol. Wow. Hey, people don't want to believe that, but I haven't wanted to drink or use for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, now think about what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. When you'd wake up every morning and wonder how you was going to get the money to get that. Yeah. And that would be all you'd think about. Obsessed by it. Yeah. Well, that hasn't Driven. happened. That right. hasn't happened to me for years. Yeah. yeah. Literally years. And I mean, that's a miracle. Yeah. What about you, Melissa? Does that ever come to mind anymore? Or, or do you still, because everybody's different. No, I, as you read on, it's like you've been placed in a position of neutrality. You've neither sworn off nor right. taken a pledge or whatever. And um, that, that's been my experience. It's like, I, I'm not even having to tell myself today, this week, this weekend, Monday, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to quit. I'm going to. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to this. I'm going to that. I, what a game to have to play every day and for that to just to be gone, that craving, that insane, <laughs> that intense marvelous? craving to be gone. Yeah. It is. It's such a relief. I know. <laughs> Good for you. Um, and it does say, uh, for by this time, and here's, here's the next promise, uh, sanity will have returned. Promise number two. By the time you get through the 10th step. Yes. Uh, here's another one. We will seldom be interested in liquor. Here's another one. If tempted, we recoil from it as from a hot flame. You it doesn't interest tempted. us. You said tempted, like somebody pushes a drink up here, have this. Oh, no. See, we're not talking about the obsession or no. the insane thinking. We're yeah. talking about being tempted. Yeah. Um, we react sanely and normally. And we will find that this has happened automatically. I, I, I remember... Going, wow, when did I stop being obsessed about that? I can't, I can't pinpoint it, the exact day and hour. You know, but when, when did I, when I, I saw a, a liquor sign on the freeway, stop thinking about the, the, the moisture sweating on the glass and the ice cubes and all, it, because that was a thing for me. Mm. Marketers understand that very well, mm -hmm. the advertising agencies. Um, you know, and, and I, I'm like, I, I just drive by the stupid billboard, doesn't he? <laughs> it's like, so what? When did that happen? It's a marvelous thing. Yeah. It, it, it really is. Um, we will see that our new attitude toward liquor has been given been given us without any thought or, or effort on our part. That doesn't mean that you don't think and you don't put effort into this step work. That's not what it's saying. It's just that I'm driving down the road and I didn't put any effort. I didn't say, well, there's a billboard coming up. I know in a mile and there's, you know, uh, two well, fingers to kilo on that thing. So I better not look at it. I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, but let's say it like it is. Let's keep it in context with the book. This is where God starts to accomplish what you can. Exactly. See, and that's what the book is relating to if you take it back to what the rest of the book is. That is the miracle of it. A miracle mm -hmm. doesn't happen by human needs. See, that's why it's been mm -hmm. given to you, and they think that's contrary to the thing like work for it. Right. See, and it's not. It's right. like when you look at the Bible and you're reading it and they say, work out your salvation. Well, it's talking about working out what God has worked in you, not to, you know, work for it. Uh, it says we are not fighting it, neither, neither are we avoiding temptation. Now, please, please don't use that. As a justification, if you find yourself having to justify going certain places, then you probably shouldn't go there. Um, if I have to make up excuses and try to convince myself it's okay and that kind of thing. Remember, we're talking about being in fit spiritual condition here. Uh, so, but but I don't, I can go and, I can buy the vegetables and the fruit that's across from the beer aisle today. I don't have to say, you know what, somebody else needs to go get the veggies. Now, there was a time I needed to do that. And that's okay. Yeah, and that's all right. But I don't have to do that today. I don't have to. I can. I can walk through life today. I can go to a wedding where I know there's going to be drinking today, and it doesn't affect me. Um, I don't gamble because that's just something I never have done. I don't even buy lottery tickets. I whine and complain that I never win the lottery, but <laughs> <laughs> you can't win if you don't right, play. Right. Right. But <laughs> but it just doesn't interest me. Never has. You know. Um, but if we were driving through Reno to go somewhere and I wanted to stop at Circus Circus and have a cheap breakfast, all you can eat, 
Well, that's another program right there, right? Overeaters. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could do that today. And not worry about the waitresses walking around with martini glasses and, you know, th- things like that. But anyway, um, it, it, it says that we feel as though we had been placed in a position of neutrality. That's what you're talking about. Safe and protected. We have not even sworn off. Instead, the problem has been removed. It's been removed. So when I say, when I introduce myself as a recovered alcoholic, that's what I'm talking about. It, it says hundreds, and that back then, now it's thousands, millions, and have that, recovered. That, yeah. And that doesn't mean that it's not contingent upon your spiritual condition, and it's a daily reprieve. It doesn't yeah. mean that. It says it does not exist for us, and it says we are neither cocky nor are we afraid, because that's really important. We can get real prideful about that. Well, I'm a recovered alcoholic, and you can't touch me. Anyway, you better watch that, you know. Um, That is our experience. That is how we react so long as we keep in fit spiritual condition. There it is. Mm -hmm. So there's a continual. So how important is this thing to you? I mean, the, the spiritual life, you know what I mean? How important is it to have that uh, fellowship of the Spirit? I'd like to go back, if I could, just for one second to yep. the uh, uh, patience and tolerance. Yes. That she was talking about. Right. It, it, when I had finally finished this work and was doing this and had uh, uh, given my life over to God, he kind of leveled the playing field for me and I was able to see for the very first time in my life that I wasn't below anybody but I also wasn't above anybody else anymore. Mm -hmm. So that, when I'd seen that and all that he had forgiven me for and it was him that was doing this, then I was able to look at other people and talk with them on that (laughs) same plane and... uh, uh, have a different relationship towards them. I see them differently. I didn't look down on them because they were still using or because they uh, um, slept under the bridge and I didn't do that. You know what I mean? See, that wasn't part of uh, my thinking anymore. So I had some tolerance and some patience because what I knew, to tell you the truth, to put it honestly, is I was no better than them. Right. I just wasn't. Oh, so you're saying where, when it says love and tolerance is our code in there, it's not like you you did the steps, you read it in the book, you wrote it out a hundred times, and you made a little badge so that you could remember that love and tolerance was our code, yeah. <laughs> but that it was something that developed out of really seeing your faults, seeing how big God was, Absolutely. being forgiven, making the amends. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I love that. You didn't have a little badge. <laughs> that was put wonderful. That was really well. That was good. <laughs> See, that's why we have people like this on the program. You know, yeah. Somebody from the World Service Office is going to be listening. And, hey, we need to make badges. <laughs> <laughs> Conference approved. Well, you, you, better, you better copyright that thing or Hazel will not get a hold of it, and then you'll be in trouble. Um, oh, oh. Now, don't you want to make the disclaimer about how you like Hazel then? Well, actually, th- there are elements of Hazel that I do like. And there are others that I'm not too keen on. Mm-hmm. That's a whole other show. Um, uh, okay, I, I love the book, uh, uh, um, um, the 24 hour book that that they took on themselves to to reprint the little black one. Mm-hmm. I love 24 that. hours a day. Oh, I love that. That is that is so good. Um, it, it says. Um, uh, bu- 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 uh, okay, but it does not. Uh, okay, it says. Uh, this is how we react so long as we keep in fit spoken condition. And then it remi- he reminds us again. Here he goes again, telling us the same thing over again because we, we learn by repetition, but saying it in a different way. It is easy to let, let up on the spiritual program of action and rest on our laurels. So yes, you, you've recovered from this. The problem has been removed. But remember, it's really easy for us to just coast along you know, for me, I call it Christian cruise control. It's a dangerous place for me. You know. Now, remember what you just read, because I'm going to say something. 
Go ahead. No, it be go ahead. And then okay. I'll, you're talking about this staying in fit spiritual condition. Right. Go ahead. Uh, we are headed for trouble if we do for alcohol. Or, I mean, excuse me. We are headed for trouble if we do. In other words, rest on our laurels. For alcohol is a subtle foe. Here make, here's a statement that is controversial. It says we are not cured of alcoholism. What we really have is a daily reprieve contingent on the maintenance of our spiritual condition. Is that where you wanted to chime in? No, I, not yet. I, 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 I can chime in anytime you want, but <laughs> now because you've already got through it. What we're doing is is he's talking about a spiritual condition, a spiritual life, and maintaining that. And right, I'm a very strong advocate that it's time. I don't want to shut the door on the past, like it says in the book. You know, it can be used as as um, ammunition to talk to somebody about drug addiction. I can do that. And they'll know that I know what I'm talking about. But that's all I use it for is to win the confidence. And I don't remember my past to keep myself sober. I remember what God has done for me. And I try to live out of the blessings right. that he's already provided for me. I don't want to wallow back there. I don't do that. And I think it's talking about stay in fit spiritual condition is to remember that and to uh, think about that mm-hmm. and ruminate on that and mm-hmm. meditate on that mm-hmm. instead of the past. But people think they have to remember where they came from. I hear it every day. Don't forget where you came from because you'll go take a drink. Keep it Show green. me where that's in the book. Yeah. Keep, keep it green. <laughs> keep it green. See, that we're not <laughs> talking about doing that. Right. And I'll tell you, one of the men that I read, and he said it like this. It's time to stop listening to ourselves and learn to talk to ourselves. And here's what he meant by that. We have these brains where we want to go over things and play these old tapes. Right. But what he's talking about talking to <coughs> ourselves is talk to ourselves about our creator mm. and some of his truths and ruminate on that. So talk to yourself. Don't listen to the crazy stuff that goes on. The little itty-bitty. So I talk to myself. <laughs> See, so we have to we have to clear what they're talk, what we're talking about here because people say I talk to myself all day. Problem is we listen to that talk. <laughs> 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 but when I say talk, I'm talking about talking about things I'm learning about my spiritual walk and you know going over that and trying to uh, uh, me- learn a verse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not uh, just the new agey self talk that's so popular. Exactly. Exactly. Have you guys, have you're you're ever, wonderful the way you put things. <laughs> have you ever said, I don't know what God's will is for my life? Yes. I've said that. Have you said that, Bruce? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, here's something interesting. It says, every day is a day when we must carry the vision of God's will into all of our activities. Um, I kind of boil it down to this. Now, I mean, I know certain things like, should I should I interview for that job or should I interview for that job? Should I turn left or turn right? Da, da, da. You know what I mean? You mm-hmm. know, is that the best parking spot for me? Ba ba ba. I don't know a lot of that stuff. But his ultimate will for my life is that whatever I do in word and deed, it points to him. That's God's will for my life. And the vision for that is how I live out of the gratitude for what God has done uh, in this process. And so so, so I, I, I have a little bit more understanding of that today. I used to try to figure out every little thing. And, and I, you can't. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think that if, if I related to the book, it'd be like being altruistic. Yeah, I think learning so. to put other people ahead of ourselves. You know, to honestly set my stuff aside for the betterment of another human being. And that's what it says. It says, "How can I best serve thee? How can I serve you? Thy mm-hmm. will, not mine, be done." Yes, and and unfortunately, within the faith community, we've got this 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 thing going on that expects God to serve us. Not just in the faith community, but even in other circles, we, we think God owes us, you know, uh, many times. And I, I think we have to be very careful. We're supposed to be serving Him. Mm-hmm. Um. It says, these are thoughts which must must go, there's a must, 
with us constantly. We can exercise our willpower along this line all we wish. It is the proper use of the will. The proper use of the will. Hmm. Uh, much has already been said about receiving strength, inspiration, and direction from him who has all knowledge and power. If we have carefully followed directions, wow, it's contingent. If we have carefully followed directions. Now we're going back to thoroughly followed our path. He's saying it again. He, how, how many times does Bill have to tell us over and over and over again that this is the program of action, that this is what we have to follow, that this is how you're going to experience the promises of each step? But how many times is this book closed and people pick and choose? Um, a lot. <laughs> and then it says this is wonderful if we have carefully followed directions we have begun to sense the flow of his spirit into us oh, gosh. wow what a promise mm -hmm. what a powerful promise heck with fear of financial insecurity look at this promise his spirit will flow into us that is marvelous to me I just it gives me goosebumps I just Gee whiz. To some extent, we have become God conscious. We have begun to develop this vital sixth sense. But we must go further, and that means more action. And then that takes us into step 11, which we'll talk about next week. Yeah, and if you notice, there's none of this stuff about when I wake up and all that kind of stuff in the 10th step. Oh, upon awakening <clears throat> and all yeah. that stuff. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, it, you know, it. It. I like to put it like this, I, the world I've entered into, that my sobriety is contingent upon my spiritual condition, and my spiritual condition is contingent upon my relationship with God. You bet. Say that again. My sobriety is contingent upon my spiritual condition, and my spiritual condition is dependent upon my relationship with, my relationship with God. Mm. You see, that's what I think the spirituality is all about, not about how well I do the steps, you know, or anything like that. The steps are no more, and I want to make this crystal clear to anybody that listens to me, is no more than a method by which we look at ourselves to see our need for God. It's a method, you know. The principles, the, the, the good book is a method by which we look at ourselves. It shows you a picture of who mankind is and... Why we need a redeemer, you know, and it, it points to him all the way through. <laughs> when you read the book, it's just amazing. It does, you know. And I'm not saying there's all kinds of things where scripture is like a two-edged sword and all those kind of things. I'm not saying that there's not power in those type of things. But uh, how come people can read uh, the Bible and want nothing to do with God? See. Yeah, all people so you do that don't all want to. It's baffling. Yeah, yeah, so you don't, yeah, it's baffling to you <laughs> because you know God. Right. Right. You see? And we don't understand that. But just know that it, if it, only the Spirit can minister to the Spirit, and Amen. the flesh to the flesh. So if we're, if, if the door has been opened to us that for a spiritual life and the Spirit, will minister to our spirit, it'll open the door to all sorts of things, uh, to the wonderment of what's in the Bible, to Christ and what he's really done for us. <laughs> I mean, you got you to gotta think, the spirit reveals these things, mm -hmm. you know, and he's the one that unifies us. I'd love to, to have a talk with you about that sometime, but what he's done to, to bring us together, you know, Oh, gosh, it's just wonderful. It's just overwhelming. That's why today I'm trying to practice to live out of these things yeah. instead of um, working for him. You know, I think he's gave it all to us. I'm going to tell Melissa something because I'd like to hear what she has to say about oh, this, goodness. the way she puts this. But you know what I think the real problem is? Hmm. It's really a gift, and we don't know how to receive it. Mm. Boy, I think that's true. Um, 
I don't know, it's just baffling to think that there's something so wonderful sitting right here and none of us can can give it to someone that we love. And you want me to tell you why I think that's yes, true? Yes, tell me, though. Because they don't see their need. They don't understand step one. What a wonderful thing our alcoholism and drug addiction has been for us. What a blessing. How, think about the mercies of God that he would allow this to happen for we could see his need, our need for him. Mm-hmm. If you don't see your need for something, you won't seek out that something. Yeah, you're not going to do That's right. It. I'm not saying that people have to be alcoholics or addicts to to go to God. I'm not saying that whatsoever. No. But I am saying that he allowed that into my life. I made these terrible choices, and he allowed me to do that. But it brought me to a place where I seen my need for him. And now it's... The, the horrible thing that I lived with all my life has become my greatest asset because I can help others. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, I'm with you. The sad thing is, since when do you have to convince someone to open a gift? Beautiful gift <laughs> on the table, wrapped with a bow. I love it. I love Gorgeous. It. That's great. Please, will you open this gift, Bruce? Please, Monty, will you open this gift? No. No, I don't like I the way it's gifts. wrapped. I don't because, like. I don't see, like they, bows. They don't see it as a gift because they want. They're they're so self centered, so self reliant. Yeah, right. See, I don't that's even know what self will's all about. I don't even know what's in the box, but I'll tell you right now, I don't need it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> open the box. No, no. <laughs> not gonna do it. <laughs> I opened the box once before, and I got bit. I'm not opening this one. <laughs> Because see what you're saying makes sense to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Since when? You bet, girl. Yeah, right on. Yeah. You guys, we're out of time. Next week, step 11. Now, here's a mouthful for you, right? Sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. <gasps> <sighs> so that's what you got to look forward to. That might take a couple weeks. That may take a couple weeks. Yeah, that's there, there's there's a lot in there. There's a lot of meat in there. All right, uh, good show, you guys. Thank you so much. Mm, thank, thank you. you. Thank Have you, a great Lonnie. week. Happy New Year, everybody! And don't forget our email address, folks. Take twelve radio at comcast dot net. Uh, shows are updated Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We have workshops. We have specialty shows that are updated as they become available. Until our next broadcast, this is the Monty Man along with Melissa T and Bruce H, and we're wishing God's perfect serenity. For you. Broadcast of Take 12 Recovery Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting.